Hey everyone, Sarah Squires, The Nurturing Coach here. Today I'm going to talk to you about narcissistic mothers and in particular the isolated childhood. So I work a lot with people who have had narcissistic parents and particularly narcissistic mothers is a very strong theme that comes out in later life. Um, adult women particularly struggle with more abusive relationships as a result but also in parental alienation I tend to see where there is a narcissistic grandmother um, involved and so the alienation is sometimes rigged by her or puppeted by them and so I wanted to talk about narcissistic mothers because there's a lot of talk around abusive men which I understand however it is really important to say that in my experience of therapeutic work it's narcissistic mothers who are coming up more and more often I haven't treated a single person who has identified their parent as being narcissistic and yet probably at least 50% of the people that I work with outside of this arena in, in a normal counselling situation they are identifying as having narcissistic parents um, and particularly narcissistic mothers. So I think it's really important that we acknowledge the damage that narcissistic mothers do, but also we seek to understand it as well so that we can, if it's something that you've experienced, you can understand and get some validation about what you experienced as a child in the um to help you move forward now once you, we can understand what has gone on in our past it can really help us to move forward and decide on what we want for our future so i'm going to talk today about a particular type but first off the outcomes for nar for children of narcissistic mothers tend to be um the few themes that crop up and they are shame which is understandable that they narcissists make you feel ashamed because you carry what they say you internalize the criticism and when that criticism is constant shame can become a constant in your life as well that goes hand in hand with that they can also become quite enmeshed with the mother so they recognize that they don't feel great around their mother but they've been taught that they can't trust anyone else and so it's safer to stay um with that mother which at the expense of lots of other relationships it could definitely lead to cognitive distortion so a change in the thinking processes a distortion of reality um because it's a very strong voice a parent's always got a very strong voice but a narcissistic parent has an incredibly powerful and all-consuming narrative of life and so it distorts everything out both internally but also externally as in your relationship with your parent is distorted and then your relationship with the outside world is distorted, like I say, as well as that relationship with yourself. Often leading to an insecure attachment. And we know that people with insecure attachments really struggle in adulthood with either withdrawing completely, not trusting anyone at all, being very avoidant or desperately wanting relationships, but struggling to know how to form them. And that in itself can lead to difficulties with peer relationships as well as romantic relationships. So it can be very lonely um, and also quite a self-fulfilling prophecy in as much as you've been told, you've had this narrative throughout your life from your, from your narcissistic mother that you are a certain way, you, that, that either they are the only people that will ever love you or that you're unlovable. And so when you go out into the outside world to make these relationships and you struggle with that it almost proves what they've said so some people can go running back and go you're right the whole world is awful 
or it can just lead to loneliness and isolation. Um, Hypervigilance, yes, narcissists like to create a lot of drama and like to make you feel very unsafe. It's part of how they control. And so when you view the whole world as being unsafe, you're constantly on the lookout for threats. Inferiority. Narcissists are superior. That's how they present and it's what they believe and they will make sure that you know that. As a child, obviously we all look up to our parents and for many years of our development, our children are the authority figures in our lives. But what happens with narcissists is that they re never relinquish that control. They remain the authority figure. Normally we would move out and our peers become more important and then our other halves become more important. But with the a narcissistic mother, that... Uh, detachment never happens you have to stay and so of course you end up feeling very in fear and ultimately worthless as part of that as well um worthless outside of the relationship with the mother but equally worthless within that relationship because they have to be the most important person and so you therefore are unimportant insecurity how can you develop security when you're living in an environment of fear and again that insecurity spreads out to how you view other people how you view the world as a whole so it can be hard to hold down jobs because you're always expecting things to change for you to be the one that gets the sack or and so you again it becomes this self-fulfilling prophecy which then reinforces the messages that you've received throughout your childhood. We've talked about fear. Fear is a massive weapon used by all narcissists. And narcissistic mothers like to use control either overtly, so violence and threats, uh, blaming, or covertly with the uh, unmeshed, the I'm the only one that loves you. Everyone else is dangerous. Stay here. Stay safe with me, even though here isn't safe. And this obviously can all lead to being very susceptible to future psychopathology and mental health problems. So it is important that we understand more about it. So the main themes of the isol of um the narcissistic mother are an incompetent childhood, an isolated childhood and a denied childhood. And this actually came out from a study from a Norwegian Facebook group for um, adult children who identified as having narcissistic parents. They asked questions around narcissistic mothers and then correlated the responses and ended up with those common themes, um, which are then broken down, which we're going to look at now. So we're going to look at isolated childhood today. And that is characterised by three main types of behaviour. The first one being dependence, then envy and creating a shiny facade, and finally blaming. So dependence. The narcissistic mother makes the child dependent upon her. She isolates the child from any competition. She sees anyone outside of her as being competition and so will not want them to have friends will not want them to engage in any social activity will want them to feel awkward and struggle with peer relationships so that they stay as being the number one um the child is conditioned to satisfy the mother's needs and the child internalizes that as becoming their purpose in life to be the person that their mother can lean on, that they can rely on, who will make them happy. Essentially, they are a slave to their mother's emotional and physical demands. The mother's presence is inescapable and undeniable. They're always there. They make themselves known. There's lots of attention-seeking behaviours um, some may result as far as threats of suicide if a child threat a, a child wants to leave. There will also be 
Um, literally, they will go on dates with them. They just won't allow them that freedom. So they are literally inescapable and undeniable. The mother regularly resorts to those attention-seeking behaviours by pitting siblings, fathers, friends against one another to keep her at the centre of the attention and in that hierarchical top position. Secrecy is a strong theme um, in, de in the dependent relationship. No one outside of the family is allowed to talk about how much control the mother has. And one of the um, quotes is she never had anything positive to say about anyone. And whilst you can pretend, you can look at that and think they were just moany, miserable people, actually it's a very clever psychological tool to make it, to hammer home that message that anyone outside of me is not safe, they're not worthy, and you shouldn't spend time with them. So the next... Um, behavior is envy and creating a shiny facade so the narcissistic mother despises others in order to bol bolster her own sense of value everything in their home has to be perfect nothing that it looks like a show home children can't be children and play because it might make a mess and then people might judge on that it has to be this wonderful perfect because they are projecting this fantasy family really out into the world so it's all about how good it looks on the outside any ch compliments the child receives they take credit for and they push their children to be the best for her so that she can feel good about herself and take all the credit and again be that center of attention she appears to others to be very caring and sensitive, but it's such a stark contrast to the misery that is felt within the family. No one is allowed to be happy unless it makes her look good or feel better. And one of the quotes is she was respected, so no one would have believed what she was really like. And that really speaks to that level of how trapped children can feel with these sort of parents. So the final behaviour is blaming. And essentially, mother blames everyone else for everything. We know narcissists do not take accountability, but the narcissist will scapegoat everyone. It might be you as the, the, the child. Um, usually you will identify as that in this situation it didn't matter what you did even if you did exactly as you were told it just wasn't good enough if the they didn't win the lottery it was your fault if their boyfriend left them it was your fault everything was your fault me all blame fell on you and what that creates is his lack of trust in the relationship because a child can never trust you, uh, the trust the parents, sorry, because they've distorted reality so much and that constant um, lack of being able to get close to them because everything is your fault. You feel that, that you just feel you're not liked and you're not wanted. And so you don't want to get close. You don't want to trust them because it's dangerous. And again, one of the quotes, I never knew whether she was telling the truth. What a scary world for a child to be living in, one where their own parent, who is supposed to ha always have their best interest, but always be honest, um, is the person that creates all of the lies and confusion. So I'll be covering the other themes within the next couple of videos but I wanted to start with this one mainly because it's the one that resonated most with me certainly in my position we were dealing with this kind of narcissistic mother um I remember that she would force the child to sit for hours to read all the way through the book uh, or all the way as many chapters as possible so that 
they could go into school and show off how much she'd be read. And the child was so upset and was crying because she didn't want to read anymore. But the mother was so determined that you will keep reading. Um, and it's just, it's just not what you expect a mother. Everything we're taught of mothers is that they are nurturing and caring. And narcissistic mothers are the exact opposite of that. They create fear and anxiety and worthlessness and shame. And when it looks like it's love, so the enmeshed, come here, come to me, be part of my life, don't go anywhere. That's not love either. And it doesn't feel like love. That's the most important thing is adult children of narcissists narcissistic mothers never feel that they were loved i'd love to know your thoughts on this video can you relate to these descriptions are these similar to your experiences if it was helpful in any way please do give me the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel also share share it with anyone that you think has had a maybe similar experience or that you think it would help educate anyone it is important that we get the message out there that children are suffering and we need to understand so we can recognize and we can help finally i wanted to let you know that i do offer free face-to-face -face, um training so it's on a facebook live um, you come in, in in the group, you can join in at 7.30 every Friday on a variety of subjects, narcissistic parents, parental alienation and co-parenting. And uh, You can ask any questions, you can get involved on the live. And if you wanted to be involved in that, link is in the description. But take care, everyone, and I will see you soon. Bye bye.